So let's say you have an application that is running and the application has two different services. And you really want to make sure that those two services are running in order for the health of the application to be up. You want to include some additional check to your health check so that you can make sure that the application is actually up. This is something that you will probably have to do a lot because you're probably going to have something specific running on your application. And unless this specific service or whatever the case might be is running, the application should be down. You want to get a status of down when you check your health information. And typically, you would probably want to do that because when you have custom services, you always want to make sure that those services are running so that you know that your application health is good. So I'm going to show you how you can actually override the health details that you get when you go to the health endpoint. So I'm going to go ahead and revert back to the actuator endpoint. Uh, I think I need to rebuild this. So let's go ahead and rebuild it. So build project. And I'm going to close those other tabs that I don't need. And we're going to come back here whenever this build is over and refresh this page. So it looks like it's finished. Let's go back and refresh. Fresh. Oh, there we go. So you can see that um, for the health endpoint right here, we have some very good information. But let's say we want to add some additional check, right? Some additional service check, or maybe you might just want to fetch some information from a remote server in order to determine if your application is actually up or to justify your application health being up. So let's go back to the application. I'm going to minimize this for a second. So I'm going to create a new package here. So I'm going to right click on this, click on new and then go to package and I'm going to call it, let's say monitor monitoring or something like that. And then here I'm going to create a new class. I'm going to go right click Java class and I'm just going to name this database service. Okay. So let's say we have a service. Uh, that's our database service and we want to make sure that the service is up and let's say we have another one which is a logger service while you probably wouldn't want to make sure logger service is up in order for your information for your application health to be uh, good um, but just just an example so let's go back to the db and all we have to do is to implement the health indicator so we can implement health indicator. So once we do this, we have to implement one method. So let's implement method, which is the health method. Okay. So we can put that in. So all we have to do here is to have some check and then return some information. So I can just do private final string and I'm just going to set this to DB service. Okay. So that's the name of the service. Okay. So that's the DB service. So what I want to do now is to just do whatever check I might need to do. Okay. So I might have another method below that's like private Boolean and let's say get database health and I would put my logic in here. So that's what you would do. So you would have this method right here or some something below here, or maybe you would just do it inside of here. It depends on whatever you like, but you might have some other dependency that you bring in here so that you can do some other check in here. Okay. So, and then all you have to do is to either return true or false, depending on your logic. So here I'm just going to return true. Okay. So this means that this database is up and it's running and your logic will determine if this is true or false. But by default, I'm just returning true here just for the sake of this demo. So what I want to do here is to just check to see if my database health is up. So I can just do actually, I just realized that I have to rename this. So we factor rename. This is a Boolean. So is good or something. Okay. So we can use this now. So now I can just go here and say, if this is true, right? So if my health is good, then I can just return my status is up. So here, all I have to return, there's like a very handy method that we can use. So we can just do return health that up, you can see here. And then we can pass in uh, some details. So I can do with details and I can see, you can see this takes a key value pair. So here I can just pass in the name of the service. So I can do database service. Well, this is a constant, but 
anyways I'm gonna re refactor this rename so I'm just gonna call it database service and that's the database service and I need space here and I can just pass this in here so I can say for this service um, I can say service is running so if that's not the case then I will return something else so I, here I can just do return and I'm gonna put the status to down so instead of up we do down with detail and then here I can just say not available okay so this is gonna do the trick for us and lastly before I forgot we have to call build on those so that we can build this so go down here and then pass and build so this is gonna do the trick first and the most important part of this is gonna be this which is gonna be your own logic to determine if the DB service is running or if it's not running so we can do something similar to the logger service I'm gonna copy all of this and go here and then go down here and paste it and I'm just gonna grab this whole thing and put it here then import so here I'm just gonna say is logger service good and then here I'm gonna return false so I'm gonna pass in the name of this and I'm gonna call this logger service and logger service and let's change the string as well okay so now we check to see if the service is running we return this otherwise we are returning the services down and all we have to do now is to make spring aware of those changes is to put component on this so that it can be aware and create the beans for us and i'm gonna do this for the db as well and then save and now i'm just gonna rebuild the application so rebuild and let's take a look so i'm gonna open this and as you can see the build is completed let's go back to the health and refresh you can see now we have more information so you can see the status for this is down and this is the database service and the status is up and the status is down for this one but our overall status is down because we have some services that are down so you can see service is running and service is not available and that's all the details that we put in on those beans uh, that we just defined right here so obviously this is a really dummy example because i'm not really doing anything for real but the most important thing again like i mentioned before is going to be this part right here because this is the part where you actually do some check you can actually access the hardware information so the server information you can check for all kinds of stuff whatever the logic is you would put it here and then return true or false depending on what you're looking for or what you're expecting to be running or whatever the case might be there's one last thing I want to show you and if you take a look at the disk space right here you can see that in their details they have different key value pairs right and in our case we only added one key value pair right here as you can see we have logger service and then if it's running or if it's not running but you can see like here they have different key value pairs right so let's say you want to do the same for your custom service so for the db service we might have is database running and then we might have some other useful information that we want to display as well and we can pass in as many of those keys uh, and key value pairs as we want so how would we do this well instead of calling this with detail we takes just a, a key uh, and a value as you can see here we can call a different one if I can show you real quick which is down below and it takes a map of string and I guess object or whatever else so you can create this map of string or string in whatever else or object and then you can pass it in here instead and then you can have access to um, to, to have multiple different key value pairs here so that's how you would do that I just wanted to um, point that out to you guys because when I was using this the first time I was like okay what what if I want to pass in more than one key value pair and then that's when I look and then I found that the same with details it's a method overloading that they're doing and there you can pass in different parameters into it so I hope this was helpful and I will see you guys in the next lecture